Let's start with color, then we'll go to vibration, size, and then some tackle. First up, color-wise, that crawfish color is absolutely deadly. You're gonna have one of these on at all times. Key tip, everybody, two to three rods for lipless and a snap, why? So you can quickly change. With these baits, it's all about solving the algorithm of size, color, sound. And if you play with that, you will key in one of the greatest spring bites of your life. So just with everything I'm saying, keep that in mind in the background that we're talking about having a couple of rods or at least a snap so you can quickly change it out. So back to color. So that's number one. You're going to usually start with this color here. When the water is, I guess, a Potomac clean, if you could say that, an early Potomac clean, so a little bit of mud in the water, a little bit of stain, that's that one. Then when it's a little cloudy out or the water's a little bit cleaner, you're going to go with that bone white to a chrome sexy shad. If I had to pick, I would prefer the sexy shad and the crayfish color. When that water has that stain to it, this is going to have the most flash and color. If the water is super dirty, fire tiger color. This one here though, I only really like to bring out if I'm dealing with like dirt, mud type of water conditions. The water's getting a little bit clearer. What I want you to go with is that golden chrome like that. It's a perfect bait fish imitator and it's really good. I don't know if the light can actually tell you right now, but it's good at reflecting light. Now, another color that this is like a Florida special that my brother and I learned like when we fished high school tournaments down in Florida is gold and gold is fantastic in two, two conditions. One, if they're hitting shiners, golden shiners, no kidding, right? That works well. The other time is when you have stained water and it's overcast when it's overcast and it works. People go with a white gold is fantastic at picking up whatever light is in the water column. So if you have low light conditions, a slight stain, and you want a little bit more flash, instead of just going to a silver, try going to that gold chrome color. It puts off a fantastic hue in the water. Usually when you pick up a lipless bait, you usually are dealing with something like a rattle trap that has a lot of small beads in it. That puts out that very, I think, high pitch clickety clack sound. The high pitch clickety clack sound is fantastic. I think when the fish are extremely active in the summertime, late spring, fall, when they're feeding down bait. I, I personally think that's when I go to this sound first. That very high pitch rattling noise. When you are dealing with these fish, when the water's cold and there's fronts and they're shut down from pressure, I think that deeper noise that comes from a one ball bearing or a two ball bearing is the better way to, to start when you're trying to key in this bite. Listen to the difference. Hear that difference? And that's what you're listening to is that deeper thud. So that is that is a that is a two ball style lipless bait. For two balls, two tungsten balls that are in that is like the Booyah hard knocker lipless. And it's like this one here. The two tap, of course, by by striking like here. And I'm trying to let you hear this. And then this is a six cents right here. The next style is called a one knocker. Now hear this one. You hear that deep thud, thud, thud. It gives off a deep acoustic noise in the water column that fish, when they're pressured and the conditions are shite, they react to. I generally start with a two knocker or a two ball lipless bait. And then I will go to a one knocker as the conditions. If I think the conditions are a little bit harder to get a bite on, there's either pressure from other anglers or there's pressure from a front. This is a silent lipless bait. It sounds stupid. I know. Trust me. I thought it was stupid too until I was fishing a BFL in, I think it was Mad Woman Creek, and there was 6,000 boats around me. And it was one of the funnest days on the water ever. I didn't win. I didn't come, you know, in the, in the top five. But I think me and my co-angler ended up catching, I think it was like 40 keepers that day and wore the paint off of them. They're all about the same size, but it, it was it was so much fun. And that really was one of the, my favorite days in the water because the adjustment we made was going to silent baits. And that completely just, it, it just flipped the script. Everyone around us was throwing worms, was throwing, we're, we're throwing some lipless baits, we're throwing chatter baits. We went to a silent lipless and absolutely smoked them. And then again, guys, let me know in the comment section below what your favorite bait is to throw during the springtime. And also if there's any questions that you want me to answer while I'm on here.